far away. And this is the second time I come from the, to the United States. Um, the first time was five months ago, and I wrote this poem after that visit. And it's what I've always thought of. Someone once told me that the grass was much greener on the other side. Now that's a quote from a show which along other dreams and childhood bricks I imported from this place. Smuggled beneath the iron curtain of this is my culture and that is your flag, I started building my mind with these foundations. So like raising up a bag of pork rocks, I could always feel home somewhere else. Or at least I tried. The closest I got was a perpetual homesickness, like a nostalgia for the things that never were every time someone mentioned America. America. The land where both cowboys and astronauts have been birthed. Responsible for my constant lack of attention during class time because of battling G.I. Joe sticking place in my head while I was rooted somewhere else. A place across the ocean that could make my mind burn with such big mythology, drowning brick cities and paper towns being written by loads of poets. And I felt compelled to read, or to come. If only to say thank you to these invisible heroes that have thrown cortex oil paintings into the sea so a boy like me, growing slowly somewhere else, could enjoy them too. This Oil gulf free they left on me of nightmares and daydreams which I'll never be able to repay. And I am aware that these trips are supposed to feel like a flash, but I feel suspending this space that have been growing all these years between my joints in this culture, which I now understand why is so prone to symbols and statues to keep my godfathers walking among them, paintings of ghosts hanging hanging in the living rooms who still tell them who they were and who they ought to be. Like watery graves they will never allow to sink. A nation that might embrace atheism with one hand and with the other shape statues to thank the fallen wherever they are and to remember the living that even if God doesn't allow your sacrifice, they will. That produces icons and heroes as if you knew nutrition went beyond food and Charlie's in comic books as armor was starving somewhere while a man pricks his finger every day with a needle to keep the flapping sports red. Whose yellow buses and plastic cafeterias were high school green that grew on me as if some alternate universe Mr. Finney had been my teacher. And do Arnold, DJ, Mikey, Beans, Gus, Pinelli, and Gretchen had all waited for reasons for you. A place that birthed these magnets, whose scriptures I've been reading since I can remember, and naively assumed they were made from some dirt different than mine. But now I realize the two are looking for the edges of this world, taking steps in spite of these imaginary turtles, waiting at the edge to feed on the walls. But even though the strings attached are strong enough, we thought, if you lean back on your ends, I will stumble forwards. Here I realize the dear and figure we have of being forgotten, if only by ourselves. We should lead us to fingerprinting everything around us, turning the coldest nights into the brightest ones. Like telling Mother Nature if we can find beauty in everything she takes away. Like telling Neil, Bust, and the other guy, they only need to look down to remember why they went so far away. To see us lifting our suns, pointing at that moon, our backyards and street lamps, and say, we make stories from this. And then they become Not the other way around. I felt like Alice for the mirror, meeting these electric crowds who, like me, had grown weary from being little pedestals for a chimeras and had to process it just to realize they never wanted to be up there. I suffered this trip, because I learned the difference between tourism and journey, and instead of the latter, you allow the place to crawl inside your skin. I collected snapshots of little towns with white churches, houses made for the winter park at the seashore, burning with stories and laughs on level they How I wish I could have been raising each one of them. I was part of communities that tried every day not to fall through the ice of this north they chose to live in, and America, don't think I'm creepy or obsessed, but I've been picturing this moment so many times before, thinking of everything I would ask when I saw you. Like, hey America, when will the strip of your wars? When will it be angelical? Hey America, were communists really that bad? Hmm. Hey America, how did it feel to have Louis Armstrong and Marilyn Monroe tap dance across your belly? Hey America, I hear you with taking in the cuddle muscles. Do you mind if I stay for a while? And as I leave, and you start to look more like the stamp I'm used to, I'm trying to remember what your streets felt like, how the people on them walked, how everyone carried themselves. I'm gonna try to bring you down from that pedestal I had built for you. You look cold up there. Thank you.